All right, guys, happy Wednesday. Welcome to the show. Today, we're going to be diving into what I think is a very, very interesting topic, and that is trans maxing. I just became aware of this actual community of people that identify as trans maxers, and we're going to talk about exactly what that means, as well as watch a video where we hear from somebody who identifies as a trans maxer. It is as maybe strange as it seems. It seems to be that there is a community of men who are deciding to transition to become women because they feel like the benefit benefits and the life that they receive on the other end of the spectrum becoming women is better than what they have as men. Now typically these are incel type individuals who are not having much success in their masculinity who knowingly choose to identify uh, as a trans maxer and become more feminine in their nature in order to give themselves a better life. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. It's a very real thing. We've spoken about this concept on the show in more of an abstract sense. I was thinking that maybe subconsciously a lot of men were making these decisions to transition as females because, you know, as men, the, the world can be really tough and maybe their prospects are not that great. But I didn't think we would hear from a community of guys who are actively admitting this is the reason why they're making this choice. So it's going to be very interesting, uh, quite honestly, a little sad. Uh, so we'll get into that very, very soon. With that, we do have Taylor in Nashville. <laughs> Hey, yeah, we were bound to arrive here eventually, but happy Wednesday to everybody. Hope you're all Wednesday maxing and <laughs> take a quick second, help us max the live stream and give us a like before we continue. Yeah, 100%. And I got a shout out uh, Abby B on Patreon who ended up sending me this video. She thought it was an interesting subject matter that I should look into and no doubt she was correct. This is a very interesting subject matter. So for those of you who don't understand what trans maxing is, we're gonna look at the, the suffix of that phrase really quick, maxing. A lot of people are tacking the, that phrase onto words now. You've probably heard of looks max, masking, which means uh, that you are trying to make yourself look as best as you can. You want the maximum outcome that you can receive on any given endeavor. So you can throw maxing on the end of virtually any word, and it just means you're trying to achieve the maximum of whatever word you've tacked it onto. So in this case, it is men trying to get the maximum trans experience and trans look. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Transmaxing is uh, a transition for personal gain. I don't want to spend 70 hours a week working. Get a personal train up and become a true man. Well, I don't want to do all those things. It is a cold and calculated decision. Plus, you don't have to worry about like birth control or anything. You've never wore a dress. And let me go ahead and warn, uh, for language and talk of sexuality and sex and things of that nature, so if you're not yet ready to hear conversations around that, not yet old enough to hear conversations surrounding that, this might not be uh, the video for you. No. And does your boyfriend know about the trans maxing? This removes testosterone. You should potentially change your sex just to get your cheaper car insurance. In this episode of Life Uncovered, I'm entering the controversial world of transmaxing. What is transmaxing? Well, according to the Transmaxing Manifesto, it's when a man transitions to become a woman, not because they identify as a woman, but because they think life as a woman is just better, and they want all the apparent benefits of being a woman and operating in female spaces. The Transmaxing Manifesto walks men through all the positives of female life, such as cheaper car insurance, I'm on my way to spend a few days with Sammy, who started their transmaxing journey a little over a year ago. So Sammy identifies as a transmaxer. The idea is that Sammy didn't have much luck in relationships in love as a man. The kind of transmaxing ideology has told them that if they transition to a woman, they'll have a lot more success. So Sammy is kind of very much into that transition and has agreed to talk to me about it. Okay, so let's pause and talk about that. Um, this does seem to be particularly, I guess, pervasive within incel type communities. And these are men that don't feel particularly masculine. Uh, they don't feel as though women are attracted to them. They're not particularly good at, you know, getting laid for, for lack of a better word. And they're 
thinking, you know, if I transition to be a woman, or at least appear uh, female in nature, I'm going to have a better time at things. And oddly, they are correct. And it does seem to be the case that uh, things do get better. Now, it depends on what you mean by better. I can see how this could be a very misogynistic view, uh, this idea that women sort of have life on easy mode. So if you're a man who's not doing too well, go ahead and transition to be a woman. But I have a very strong feeling in listening to this video and looking through some of the manifesto, which I did uh, look through, and I will pull up for you guys at some point during this episode, that a lot of this has to do with getting laid, essentially. This is I, this seems to be the backbone of the idea here, and that incels obviously do not have that opportunity presented to them in their you know present state, and they feel as though transitioning to be a woman is going to fast track them down that road. And for a lot of them, that actually works out, but let's keep, let's keep watching. It is undeniably a controversial topic, potentially the most controversial one of this Life Uncovered series. How you doing, Sammy? I'm Ben. Nice to meet you. Really nice to meet you. Should we go for a little stroll? I like this place, got a nice little spot, a little tiny fridge. Yeah, I got all the essentials. Can I see what's in the fridge? Um, probably fuck all, but... Let's see, moment of truth. I've got some cakes in there, yeah. <laughs> I feel you're a big fan of AA batteries. Yeah, yeah, you need a lot, because um, I, you know, game quite a bit. <laughs> can you pull out the pre-transition clothes, just so I can sure, have a look? Sure, sure. This is old, Sammy. <laughs> Flannel yeah. shirt. Yeah, pretty basic, not, not too flashy. This is me when I was 20. Uh, hair is starting to recede a little bit. Not a great time in my life. I wouldn't look at that and think, yeah, that is a masculine dude. When I saw this picture, I was like, yeah, I need to do something about my appearance. What did you think a man was at this point? Dominant, successful, outgoing, confident, strong, resilient. How did you think you sat in relation to that? I was a far cry from that. I would take a lot of work to even get uh, close to that. I'm looking at that and I'm like, yeah, you look like a guy. I look like a guy, but I don't look like a manly guy. Would you say that your life w was slightly incel-esque? Sure, yeah, yeah, um, somewhat isolated. Could you get up the kind of transmaxing manifesto? The transmaxing yeah, manifesto? Yeah, I'm sure I can find it. Yeah, let's pause before we get there. Um, interestingly enough, you know, I can empathize with this person quite a bit. It feels probably not great at all to be uh, a guy who is not receiving any attention, is not perceived to be super masculine in a world where you're competing with other masculine men towards uh, a very specific goal, and that is uh, to be loved, to get sex, to get all these different things. And if you can't uh, achieve that, I can see where somebody might want to take uh, the shortcut of switching up their identity and fast tracking that process. I'd argue that there are other things that you could do in your male form that would make you far more successful with women and far more successful as far as being perceived as masculine. Now it takes a little bit of time. It does take time to, you know, like eat healthy and work out and work on your social anxieties and things that don't do too well when you're in, in, in social settings. But my goodness, transitioning to be a female is quite a dramatic thing to go through. And before they go through this manifesto, I have it somewhere here. I'm gonna pull it up so that you guys can see some of what these individuals seem to be finding online. This thing is like 70 something pages. It's very, very long, but they talk about all the different benefits that women get, like, you know, free drinks and attention, and it's much easier to engage uh, and get laid as a woman. They go through all these different studies on how your social life changes upon transitioning to be female. They have input from others who are deciding to trans max. And I'm trying to find a specific graphic that I feel really exemplifies what they're talking about here. I'm gonna scroll through and find it. Here it is. Okay, I'll go ahead and put this a little larger for you guys to be able to see it. But you see this virgin antidepressant user and all the different descriptors that they have for this individual here. It says, you know, frustrated rightist politics, 
overpriced, kills sex drive, not cute, will never be, getting uglier, will never have a girlfriend, destroyed personality to be more useful to a system that hates him. Uh, let's see. Atomized individual, literally nobody cares about you, shit clothes, pills don't work anyway, will be forgotten immediately, seriously, there's millions of you, not actually happy, lied to by chemicals. And this seems to be the descriptor for the average man who is leading the life that might lead him to trans max. And then you have your Stacy transitioner on the other side, which I guess is their end goal that says growing even more, ever more feminine basically living a sexual fantasy 24-7, which I imagine is some sort of allusion to AGP or autogynephilia, which is what a lot of, uh, of trans individuals today experience if like they get off on the idea of performing out this view of femininity and this caricature of femininity says authentic happiness, can sleep with men whenever she wants, probably with women too, it works. These tits are real, yo. Bargain HRT from Kiev. On the right side of history, you're actually special and worth remembering. Gets to wear all the fun stuff. Massive friend groups of transitioners and cis women. And expresses personality fully. Does not care about productivity. So that gives you a little bit of a look into the mind's eye of some of these people. They think, one, and most importantly, through reading this manifesto, most importantly seems to be that they'll get laid uh, if they pretend to be a woman, but they tack on all these other privileges and benefits that you supposedly receive upon becoming a woman, meaning that uh, people like you more, and particularly, I believe they said leftists and women will like you more in this manifesto, because if you're trans, you're automatically moved to the top of the oppression hierarchy and people want to treat you better they get to live i guess authentically i don't know how authentic that lifestyle actually would be considering it is a caricature of womanhood and then there's this idea that they can sort of go and find a wealthier high value man who is interested in trans women or if you pass enough and look like a normal woman, this man will sort of take you under his wing, you'll build a relationship, you'll have resources, and you won't have to be a productive member of society, is actually what some of them saying. Because as, as a woman, you can just be the trophy wife or a girlfriend to these sort of individuals. So that lays the groundwork there a little bit. Taylor, I see you're smiling. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess it's like a laugh to keep from crying situation because it is really it is really sad. And like um, the one that stuck out to me is on page two. There's basically like a step by step process of how to try to uh imagine yourself as a woman, how to transition basically, but to do so, even though you don't feel attracted to men, even though you never thought of yourself as a woman before, it's like giving you all these weird, like animes and, and things to watch, uh, that you, and instructions on like how to imagine yourself as a woman while watching certain kinds of pornography or different things like that to try to get off to that. And just the, the, the layers, uh, go deeper and deeper. And some of the, the instructions that they give are just very, uh, disturbing. And all of this is like, it, it feels like a, an advertising effort, uh, on behalf of the appropriation of womanhood. And it's like, hey guys, if you're feeling disaffected, if you're not having success in life, in dating life, if you're feeling inadequate as a man, then I know you may have never considered, you never have felt dysphoric, you may have never wanted to live as a woman, you may not be attracted to men, but this is a great escape hatch and here's a great marketing pitch for you as to why we've got data, we've got cartoons, we've got step-by-step -step processes, mm -hmm. we've got testimonials. That's essentially what this manifesto is. And just to imagine the state of mind and maybe despair that one would have to be in to be, find this something that is compelling and like a ser an option to be considered given the just dramatic changes that one would have to make to their lifestyle, to their physical body. Um, yeah. It's it's very disturbing to uh, to consider and really, you know, just to imagine the headspace that these people are in it, it you do feel a, a lot of uh, a lot of pity and sadness mm -hmm. for them and but that also doesn't justify like some of the negative 
uh, you know, you, I think we'll hear that this, how this doesn't, they, they say this doesn't really affect other people, but we can get into how it would be affecting you right. know, women's spaces and um, the appropriation of womanhood in general. But I guess we'll save that for, for the reaction. But yeah, those are just my initial thoughts looking at the manifesto. Yeah, 100%. You know, you feel bad for these guys, obviously. I think like uh, it, it t makes total sense how they're using their thinking to get to the result of transmaxing. If you're an incel, pretty much you are disliked or looked down upon from all members of society, all sides of the political aisle. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of bullying and harshness and then social anxiety and all this different stuff. And maybe this seems like an easier way out, but we'll watch more and see if that's actually the case. No, it says there are many potential benefits from transitioning to male to female. The superiority of female aesthetics. Female spaces are cleaner and generally more pleasant. I mean, that is a controversial one. I don't think it's controversial to say that female spaces don't have piss all over the floor. Yeah, it's definitely not controversial. I don't know why the interviewer said that. Coming male to female transsexual is a way better option than being an incel as a male. High quality males will be attracted to you. Being able to extract resources from males. Yeah, <laughs> having dinner paid for you or getting drinks at a bar. Has it happened? Yeah, so like yeah. people have started buying you dinners and stuff. Um, yeah, I've been offered a lot. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I like and there are a lot of uh, very successful men who are into that stuff. Uh, let's make that clear, because I know a lot of people maybe in the comments are saying they're not going to get men this way. They do. There are people who are very much into this sort of thing in their dating and in their personal lives, and uh, they will uh, fork out cash for it. This one says you get cheaper car insurance. You should take every advantage given to you. You should potentially change your sex just to get keep cheaper car insurance or I, I don't think that's a primary reason to transition but it's definitely a secondary reason it's got a kind of testimonial the experience of becoming female i was only 5 8 and had a 2.7 inch erect penis since being on the hormones i've lost weight so i'm closer to 5 7 now i've been on estrogen for six months so what do you think of changing your sex because you have a 2.7 inch erect penis and you're not that tall i think that's pretty reasonable so it's better to just disregard the penis altogether. You're, you're not going to please a woman with a 2.7 inch penis. One day when I... Yikes. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> these people have a interesting lot in life. I just don't like that it's not acknowledged that there are so many other things you can do before transitioning to become a woman that will help you tremendously. And it is sort of this defeatist attitude um, on like behalf of the people that make this choice, that there are not way more reasonable, way more logical things that you can do that are not misogynistic, that are not, you know, affecting other people in the way you live, although they don't think that they're affecting other people in the way they live. And, you know, completely sort of bending and muddying the waters when it comes to sex and gender, whichever terminology you want to use there. It's interesting to say the least. I mean, you know, some people do desire that. Desire what? Um, an extreme, uh, intense sexual experience. All right, so I've just stepped out for a second and I've got to say that manifesto is one of the wildest things I've read in a long time. You know, this is a group of people who identify as male um, saying that they are effectively kind of playing the system. You know, they are transitioning because they think life as a woman is easier. They think they're going to get males who they can take the resources from. They think they might be able to get cheaper car insurance. And it just feels like something that is really gonna anger kind of a lot of people. Oh, hello. Yeah. Wowzers. So this is as masculine as it gets, yeah. How do you mm. feel in? I don't know, kind of bland. <laughs> Does it feel less comfortable? I just don't really feel much about it. Just watching this video on your laptop, voice feminization? Yeah, voice training was probably the last thing that I did. So, so your voice did used to be different? Yeah. Like what? I mean, I'll, I'll try, but yeah. I c so it should sound like this, just normal, bland. <laughs> yeah, a little bit deeper, I guess, yeah. And then do your new voice? Um, it kind of sounds like this. It's just like higher. So, what have your family said about it all? I don't explicitly present in front of my dad, and then I'm not in contact with my mother. How much do you think kind of not 
having a hugely close relationship with your parents played a part in the kind of eventual decision? Yeah, I am, you know, a bolder person and a more confident person because, you know, no one showed me how to be. Miss Vidi. Ah, I mean, uh, it's tough. There's a lot going on here. I'm trying to think. The, the, the vocal feminization, it's all littered throughout the, the manifesto that you find online that one of the first things you do, although this person chose to do it last, is to sort of train in vocal feminization. And there's YouTube tutorials and all this different stuff you can get. I believe there's even surgeries that you can undergo for vocal feminization out there now. You can tell in this individual's energy that they're very... Uh, self-deprecating. They look down on themselves a lot. You know, said this is as masculine as it gets. You know, my voice was just so bland and, you know, nothing to it. And you just had a normal voice. I mean, there's so many things that you could do, again, before making this uh, transitional choice. But again, they're getting exactly what they want out of the transition, which is to immediately be ushered into a group of people that is uh, liked, for lack of a better word, but like treated more softly, whereas incels aren't really treated that softly. They have an automatic thing that makes them uh, interesting or unique and sets them apart from other people, and they can engage sexually with people who are into this new identity by sort of just like slapping on a, a dress and, and feminizing the voice a little bit. And you spoke about his sort of defeated mentality, and I think that also really came across uh, in the picture mm -hmm. that he showed earlier. And he his his commentary on it was just like like the the interviewer was like, "You you look like a guy to me in that picture. You're like a normal guy." I mean, I think maybe he could have used a haircut <laughs> or something, mm -hmm. and and it had like a very uh, sulking sort of demeanor. And sometimes we just take bad pictures, but he almost made it sound like he had that was his self image of him uh, was so low. He had such a low opinion of his capability as a man that he just kind of had this defeated given up uh mentality and state in his soul and that he was already at the point of desperation when maybe this uh this new ideology around trans maxing was presented to him and i guess that's why it was appealing but you look at it and you're like he, I think he needed somebody, uh, hopefully good friends, posit like a positive uh, role model in his life to just be like, man, like you can do this. Like you're you're good mm -hmm. enough. Let's you know, let's go get your haircut and let's go uh, do some. I mean, you caught a fish. That's already a badass thing to do. Like let's mm -hmm. let's build on that, bro. Like you can do this. Uh, and it it is also lamentable to me that it just seems like guys in general in society right now. You know, we talk about the demise of guys or the war on men, and there's such a dearth of just encouragement of vision of a sense of of purpose and and uh, and this idea that this aspirational idea that you know you can do it and it is worthwhile to em embrace your masculinity and to live that out look uh, people have different uh, obstacles and issues and uh things that they face and there's always somebody who's got it worse than you uh and so when you're feeling down on yourself like you know what it could be worse and let's Take the, the hand that you're dealt and play it the best that you can and, and take pride in that. But I feel like that maybe that maybe that comes off as cheesy these days. I don't know. But I, it does just seem like, you know, there's too much hopelessness around guys. And that's why we're seeing stuff like this emerge uh, and be appealing to them in this day and era. Yeah, whatever I, I can at the very least say is I appreciate the honesty because I think a lot of trans people are transitioning for this very same reason, but uh, they're not being honest about the fact that that's why they are transitioning. And maybe they don't feel it consciously. Maybe it's a subconscious desire that they have. And since they don't recognize it, they can't uh, share that out loud. But I think a lot of them know that this is their very reason that they're deciding to transition and are not being upfront and direct about that because it doesn't look so good when you're upfront and direct about that being the reason. Dio gives you a bit of a play-by-play -play of how to get HRT. So this removes testosterone and then this replaces it with estrogen. In a lot of places you can't actually get hormone replacement therapy. This is, this is somebody who's posted a tutorial. They take the raw ingredients of estrogen and then inject it. So these are people who are kind of self-medicating. It's full on instructional, isn't it? It's just like, okay, go to this website. Here's how you do it. Here's how much you take. That's kind of why I came to the Discord is to find resources on um, treatment. Someone's actually asking on this forum, forum, how do I get it without my parents' consent? Yeah. And the person says, just buy it and be stealth about getting the packages. What do you think of that? Um, 
I think that there, it's good that there's like a support network. Some parents can be very um, unaccepting and they will go out of their ways to make their children's lives hell just because of their gender expression and gender identity. This is such an interesting phenomenon because it points out like so many different things about uh, just life and our current society and how sick we are as a society that this is the result. And I feel really bad for individuals who feel like they need to go this far in altering themselves in order to achieve their end goal. But it also really emphasizes the role of the internet in current life. These men are feeling disaffected, disenfranchised. People are not interested in them. And there was a time where you could not just go to the internet and sit all day and talk to people through a screen. You really had to go out and face the world. You had to go to school. You had to get a job. You had to meet with other people. And, you know, whether that was an anxious process or not, there was sort of a, a forceful energy pushing you toward an end where you had really no choice uh, as to whether or not to engage with it. But when you're feeling these things now and you're venturing into inceldom and all these different things, you can just turn to the internet and the internet and the algorithms on these social media platforms will force feed you what you're uh, most influenced by and sooner the I guess all the different external things that you're getting on the internet become smaller and smaller and smaller as the algorithm sort of dials in and figures you out more. So where you would have heard from a ton of different men, now you're hearing from men who aren't doing that well with women. Now you're hearing from men who are in, involuntarily celibate and identify as incels. And then you fall down into an echo chamber of people just bouncing around this idea that you need to trans max and this is how you're going to become a successful man. And soon that's all you're hearing. So these people are in like discord servers and, and they're on uh, message boards and they're talking to one another about their experiences and only getting one prescription in return because of the way uh, these things work now. And that's kind of terrifying because that's how you radicalize an individual toward any end. It doesn't really matter. You can use any example. You radicalize them by completely surrounding them with people who are in the exact same boat who have a certain message and a certain end goal with them and they'll just continue to encourage them. And once you start, you know, at some point, uh, you know, there are a few who turn back and detransition. But I believe there are a lot of trans people who start the process, maybe start feeling regrets or, or think this is not the choice for them, but they've gone so far into the progress that they just decide to, uh, to continue uh, through, through no other choice. One reason Sammy and other trans maxes often transition is to find love. Sammy felt they were much more attractive presenting as a woman than a man, and it's kinda worked. Sammy now has a boyfriend called Ross. Tonight is date night, and we're off to buy Sammy's first dress and get a makeover. Yeah, one of the reasons, it's the main reason. I'm calling it now, it is the main reason. And they're calling it love, but I think on an even more basic level, it is sex. That is the reason that men are deciding to transition in this way. It'll be the most feminine Ross has ever seen them. This one's quite nice, bit of belly top action going on. Yeah, yeah. Quite simple. I like the style, not necessarily the color though. Where did you meet your boyfriend? Um, we, we met online. Would you say you're in love? <laughs> uh, I'd say that's way too early to say. You know, I don't really know how to feel about this. Although it is like um, slimming and you do get to see a bit of skin, um, you do see a bit of my ribcage there. How do you feel him seeing you in a dress? There's um, a nervousness. If I'm showing off my bulge, yeah, I think that's too much. <laughs> I don't want to be seen as a man wearing feminine clothes. I want to be seen as a feminine person wearing feminine clothes. It's just a moment of truth. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, I'm going to go with this one. It's, it's quite a big moment, really, isn't it? Because you've never wore a dress. No, but um, to be fair, this kind of opened the door. Maybe, maybe I might try a few more. Have you had like a kind of full makeup job? I mean, I haven't had it professionally done, but um, you know, there's a first for everything. Hello, Corrine, pleasure. Yeah. pleasure Thank you, you so much. Can you show me the eye makeup, which you like to achieve? Something, something mm -hmm. subtle, but mm -hmm. enough to make a statement. Mm -hmm. Try to uh, feminize my features just a little bit more. Could you explain to Corrine the kind of concept of transmuxing? It's uh, transitioning uh, in order to have a better quality of life, to be treated better by people. What do you make of that as a concept? They're pro and con, you know, because again, being a woman, you think men, they have more advantage than women. 
So for example, better paid, different jobs. Some jobs only men they can do when they're like, oh, you are a woman, you shouldn't, so. It's so very interesting to hear like the feminist perspective or the modern day feminist perspective of like men do have it easier than women. Why would you want to transition to be uh, a woman when you already born in an advantageous body? <laughs> and then to hear from the trans max community who's saying it's so much easier to be a woman, I'm going to be treated better, which is just a veneer for sex again. But I'm going to go in and take on the life of a woman because I'll get all I'll get easy street, essentially. It's so in both are wrong and it's just uh, so wild that this is the world we live in. Do you think life's easier as a woman, Karine? It depends, like fully woman, when you give birth, when you are going yeah, through yeah. all that. As a trans maxi, you don't mm. have to necessarily worry about those things, so you get all of yeah, the benefits. Yeah, but you took only the, <laughs> you take only the good parts. <laughs> wow, there we go. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling great. So this is your first time wearing a dress? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, as well as lashes, yeah. Let's go see your boyfriend. Yeah. Give him the reveal. Thank you so much, Karina. All right. It's interesting that he actively admits he is not experiencing gender dysphoria. So this is not like a, a diagnosable mental illness. He is just logically working his way to the idea that he should transition to be a woman. Very interesting. It's well, dinner time it is. That's a freaking massive rabbit, isn't it? Bloody hell. I didn't even know you could keep rabbits like that. Do you have any candles or anything? Kind of set the scene. <laughs> yeah, I have a candle. Did you date men prior to identifying as more feminine? Yeah, I just hadn't really explored my sexuality truly till like, till I entered university. But has it got easier now that you're more feminine looking? Oh, definitely, yeah. And does your boyfriend know about the trans maxing? Um, you can ask him. <laughs> It's interesting that they said, you know, I hadn't really explored my sexuality until this, poor, this part of my life. I would argue that that's not true. I bet there was a ton of sexual exploration happening, but you weren't successful in, you know, engaging with somebody on that sexual level. So now you've decided to make this change in the name of exploring sexuality when that I, is really not what it is. You're a, a man who could not find the, a successful outcome as a man, and you want to be able to engage with somebody in that way, so you become a woman, which you know arguably would make it easier uh, because I, you know you you slap on a dress and some makeup, and suddenly people are interested in in you. And there are men out there that sort of have like a fetish or interest in this sort of lifestyle. So I imagine it does open up the pool a little bit for you, which is just a very strange, strange thing uh, to to think about. But yeah, I don't know that you weren't exploring things before. You just weren't exploring them with other people. Yeah, and I see some of y'all in the chat saying, see, we get it, he's gay, he's gay. And I, he didn't answer that in a straightforward manner. Usually when someone's gay, they're, they say like, I I knew I was gay, and they're very straightforward and open about that fact. And uh, I just, again, recall the way the manifesto was like, you might be a straight dude and you may have never considered uh, or been attracted to men or considered gender dysphoria, like you're saying, mm -hmm. but we're still trying to sell you on this lifestyle because it is y your way to a kind of sexual fulfillment. And you can train yourself to become fulfilled uh, sexually by this path that we're laying before you with the transmaxing. So yeah. I, I don't think he necessarily was gay. Me neither. Uh, he, he, yeah, he just was started, he was unfulfilled and felt like he were unsuccessful and uh, found this as his solution. Because even as he's trying dresses on and things like that, he, he has this sort of numbness about himself as far as like, oh, I, he's not like, oh, I feel so pretty or anything. It's just kind of like, it's, it's, there's this level of detachment. And uh, for him, it's like he's got the momentum of going down this transmaxing path. And yeah, he's even the, the way he's kind of framing his relationship with his boyfriend. It's kind of, again, there's like, it's very vague. There's not much in the way of feeling or love or anything. It's like all 
they're not saying it very much out loud, but there's definitely like a, a sexual motivation that mm-hmm. if you're reading between the lines, you can see. They can't get anything as a man. They can't, they are not great at communicating with men. They're not great at communicating with women. The manifesto states, you can, you're going to find a partner. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. They are simply looking for a sexual experience of any kind. And they get to a point where they're so lonely and so desperate that they will go for whatever it takes to get them to from point A to point B, which is the sexual experience. And at some point they go, you know, I don't care if it's a man or it's a woman. I want the experience. And that's something that like I think you will virtually never hear a biological woman talk in this way about uh, sexuality and trying to achieve that goal. I think very rarely would you hear that. I think women want companionship and affection and they will go down whatever route it takes to find companionship and affection, which involves you know, settling for toxic relationships. If they're not too good at communicating with men, they will try with women or they will like masculinize their features and then you know try to get a woman and all these different things. But they're more looking for affection, love, companionship, Men are like, I, and and biologically so, I want to have sex with somebody. How can I get to that route? Even if it's not what I initially imagined, which would be a woman. Welcome. How are you? (laughs) (sighs) Hello, Ross. Pleasure to meet you. How are you doing? I'm Ben. Nice to meet you, Ben. All right, really nice to meet you. I mean, you look amazing. This is new. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> what do you think of the dress? It's nice. It's uh, it's almost like Paisley pattern. I'm yeah. from Paisley, oh, so yeah, I'm yeah, Paisley yeah. pattern. <laughs> I was hoping that Ross would be a little bit more excited about the dress, but anyway, over dinner, it was my chance to ask just what he knew about Sammy's journey. What do you know about the concept of transmaxing? I thought I vaguely knew what it meant. But then as you explained it to me, I was like, oh yeah, no, I don't actually know what this is at all. <laughs> what do you think it is now? You know, changing certain things about themselves to, I don't know, to use the word max, like maximizing, like, I don't know, you're just whatever physical attributes you want to, I don't know, like, accentuate. So what did you think about that at first? Well, it's, it's not like the strangest thing I've heard about. People kind of, I don't know, reinvent themselves all the time. Oh my God, my presentation. He's a very ordinary dude. <laughs> I was kind of like, I was I was wondering, like, oh, I really want to see who the boyfriend is. Very ordinary guy. Asian skills. Sammy was mentioning that they are into quite conventional gender roles. The man doing more working, the woman doing less working. Are you happy with that balance? I suppose it just depends how you look at it. Someone would say like, oh, well, traditional gender roles don't really exist anymore. Uh, so yeah, it... I've got a lot to learn if I'm going to be that traditional stay-at-home wife. <laughs> so I guess the, the idea of kind of transmaxing, one of them seems to be that women have an easier life. Right. Do you ascribe to that concept? I think maybe in some situations, yes, probably more more towards like kind of social situations. Yeah. It's a con- controversial concept that women have it easier because obviously that's often quite the opposite. What do you think of... This interviewer is coming in with too much of his own bias here, and it's somewhat irritating, like in the questions, like we could be going so much deeper into these concepts and truly allowing them to elaborate on their spaces, but because he feels his own sense of personal bias when it comes to the lives that women lead and the lives that men lead, he feels the need to like shut down what he's saying. Well, that's often not true. You know, women do have, women do have harder lives in many respects. Chill out. Ask him to elaborate on what he means by women having it better socially and get a, a point of view that, you know, to the audience might make them understand this decision a little better, or at least get a broader scope of why somebody would decide to go down this path. And what he said is most definitely correct. There are social situations in which men, well, women wholly benefit. We are pedestalized. We're uh, protected in a lot of ways. We get a lot of free stuff. Uh, you know, people of uh, both uh, genders and sexes want to socialize with us, some for different reasons. You know, a lot of men just want to socialize with women in order to, uh, you know, get laid and all this different stuff. But it, it can be a nicer and softer life when you are living as a female. Now, the other side of that is there's a, a, a lot 
to lose in becoming a woman. And there's a lot of different dynamics that are suddenly in your life that you didn't have to deal with before as uh, a man. You have, you know, safety concerns. There's a little bit of paranoia in that other people are much stronger than you. But these transmaxing individuals don't really have to worry about that, I guess, until the hormones run their run their total course. So I can c totally understand and empathize with the fact that somebody is making this decision. I just question whether or not the decision is the correct one. And in my opinion, it's not. But damn, the interviewer needs to allow them to share so that people can understand. Of the idea of changing your sex purely to make your life easier, not because you necessarily feel that sex. Definitely isn't for everyone, uh, but if it makes you happier, then I don't see why some people wouldn't do it. Uh, I would have asked this guy, like, what is, like, if you had to give me a descriptive you know, uh, you know, paragraph about your sexuality. What is your sexuality? Like, what made you interested in somebody of this background? How is it dating somebody that is going through this process and is really not on the tail end, but right in the middle of the journey? There's so many things to decipher here. Do you feel like making this transition does make these men more attractive to other men? Have you met other men who also share your interests in this way? Is this a whole nother community that you're a part of? But we don't get any of those answers. Um, I'll, do you want to take that one from oh. me? Do you think transmaxing is controversial? If your if your sole purpose is to get laid, then yeah. But if you're doing it with a heartfelt belief that um, you know it will improve your quality of life beyond your sex life. How do you see the be so for real right now? There are so many sort of lies that we have to tell ourselves in order to justify the actions that we're making. His caricature of womanhood is the correct caricature of womanhood because he's receiving other benefits from the system outside of sexual activity, which, again, the main priority is sexual activity. Don't even try to BS me and cover it up with, oh, we get cheaper car insurance or people treat me better. I understand that those are also advantages that you get, but we know exactly why it's doing, why how he's doing that. So his argument is because I get to trick the system more and I'm getting more out of the system than just sex, it's justifiable that I've made this choice for myself, but not when other people do it for just the, the sexual part of the, of the journey. The future of your relationship, Panningo? I mean, should be all right, yeah? Yeah. Transmaxing seemed controversial, as it went against the conventional idea that people didn't choose their gender identity, they were just born that way. It seemed like it could be harmful to the trans community, so I wanted to talk to someone who could speak from that perspective. Julie has spent years providing support to trans people in Bournemouth. I was intrigued to find out how Julie would feel about Sammy's decision. So now he's trying to place Sammy in the hot seat to get uh, what he believes to be an actual trans person, whatever that means, to confront Sammy, uh, when really, if we look subconsciously, the choices are very much the same, whether or not you are experiencing uh, gender dysphoria or not. Arguably, it is worse to be experiencing uh, gender dysphoria and probably, you know, a, a very tough journey. And I can understand what you have to grapple with and why somebody might make the decision to transition. But I can also understand from Sammy's point of view as a disaffected male, why he would make the very same choice. Are the trans maxing community part of the general transgender community? Yes, because the phraseology now is trans and gender diverse. They are gender diverse. They're not, their gender isn't the binary man or woman. It's somewhere in between. So I think if you read the kind of trans maxing manifesto, one of the potential tenets and benefits is to be able to kind of acquire the resources of a male counterpart. Yeah. Is that the right reasoning to kind of transition? A lot of, um, Female-bodied people do that. They don't need transmaxing to do it. They will look for a partner that has got lots of money um, because they want that security. That's a, that's a legitimate reason to transition. A lot of female people who get up in the morning look dreadful, but they'll put on an awful lot of makeup and a lot of nice clothes so that they can be attracted to the person who drives the Rolls Royce. And another um, aspect I'm, of the kind. He's not wrong, so he's just saying, you know, two can play that game. I'm just going to add the extra layer of also pretending to be a woman. The uh, manifesto seems to say that a benefit of becoming trans, a uh, trans maxer, is to get diversity hires. What do you think of those? Um, you know, the question is why not? Who are you, who are you hurting, and which laws are you breaking by 
adjusting your presentation such that you get a good job? The question is... Mm, well, I have a ton of uh, questions to ask there. Which bathroom are you going into? Which part of the spa are you going into? When you play sports, which team are you playing on? Which prison are you going to? How do you define a man and a woman? There is this idea that, oh, we're not affecting anybody by making this choice. You very much are. Uh, and uh, social convention exists for a reason. And there are so many things that these people are not getting pushback on because they're viewed as marginalized parts of society. So, yeah. People are affected. <laughs> so is that a legitimate reason to transition? It's quite major processes for something that isn't because you necessarily feel as though you want to present as a woman, it's because you want to get ahead. If you're using the system and playing that system to your advantage, that is to be respected. But do you think women are just Respected. To utilize a system to your advantage is a strong word. I can understand people being, you know what, I understand it. You know, when uh, Trump said, uh, you know, I just utilize the tax system to my advantage and that's how things work uh, for me. There's an element of, okay, yeah, you found your loopholes, you found ways to do that. That's fine, I understand uh, what you're saying. But to go as far as to say, and that should be respected, is a very bold and audacious thing to say. I'm not going to respect the fact that you found some sort of loophole that gets you sexual engagement and free drinks at the bar and free dinner dates and a high-value man, whatever that means in this scenario. I, I'm not going to extend respect to you because you found a way to sort of cheat the system as it stands. Nope. No, thank you. Or generally just treated better? No. No, a lot of women. No. Um, there's a lot of uh, misogyny is, is still rife. Having said that. <laughs> misogyny is still rife, says the man who chose to take on the identity of women because it is easier to be a woman. And his view of the identity of women is a soft voice, a wig, makeup, and feminine clothes. Close. But misogyny is, is rife within the world. Whew. Isn't it ironic, don't you think? There are uh, certain local advantages to being a woman. Someone talks to you more nicely. One of the reasons why they talk to you nicely is because they want to get in your knickers. That's a fact. That's, that's what the blokes do. There is definitely an argument that the idea that people are saying I'm choosing to do this not because I feel like I, I'm a woman, or, but I'm doing it because I just think life will be easier. A lot of people will be put off by that and they'll go, well, you're just trying to cheat the system. You're not, the thing is, you, A, you're not breaking the law, and B, you're not hurting anybody. Mm. So I've just finished with Julie and Sammy. And I'll be We've already discussed hurt and, you know, how that is not a correct characterization, but... You end up again with Sammy soon, but that was surprising. I thought Julie would have a real issue with this. I thought they'd have a problem with Sammy's motivations. <laughs> um, but it felt like Julie kind of saw this as just part of Sammy's journey and whatever they choose to describe it as, as long as it makes them happier. That's kind of the goal. And I kind of understand that, but then, you know, the reality is they're doing this for what a lot of people would say are really kind of problematic, kind of calculated reasons. So yeah, it's a difficult one. I mean, a question I have at this point is, you know, maybe Sammy is just going through a transition and this is how they've chosen to deal with it. So he's trying to justify in his brain that this man's choice and saying, well, maybe he truly is experiencing gender dysphoria and that is what makes up for the transition, as if that makes it any better. Now, I would argue that like in extreme, extreme cases of gender dysphoria, where the person sees no other options, they are, you know, hurting themselves, they're, you know, getting hormones at the black, off the black market, maybe there is some, uh, you know, reason to allow them to uh, socially transition. And of course, everybody's allowed as long as you're an adult. And I'm not uh, advocating that we change that in any way, shape or form. But those are the only situations where I could feel as though it, it is justifiable. But we, the reality is that a lot of people grow out of these feelings, given the time uh, and given the recourse to sort of take scope of the entirety of their life and where they could be and other goals that they could work toward. And uh, to give in like this is not not particularly helpful, in my opinion, although it may fast track you to some of your goals, uh, like a boyfriend and, and love. Do you think you could see yourself coming here full bikini, full, you know, out to the world? Um, yeah, in 
Uh, six to 12 months time, definitely. What will happen in that time? Um, my, the effects of my hormones will have feminized my body and I could uh, pull off a bikini without people thinking otherwise, for the most part. Will you identify as a woman, do you think? Um, I don't think so, but I'm, I may change that in like the coming years. So, so mm. you see yourself going forward, yeah, potentially changing your your yeah, sex so, legally to a woman. Yeah, yeah, just so then I can claim the same, um, you know, benefits of being a legal woman. Yeah. So in a year's time, I could see you on this beach with a passport that says you're a woman. Yeah, that could be very likely. How will you feel at that moment? Um, like my mission's complete. <laughs> there you go. All right, so after two days of filming with Sammy, I can say I'm only more confused than I was at the start. You know, on the one hand, I can see that Sammy's someone who's kind of really struggling with their identity and the sexuality, and transmuxing has given them like a guide on how to deal with all that. But on the other hand, the actual kind of manifesto of it all it is problematic. You know, I personally don't know how to take it. There you go. I mean, it's all problematic. <laughs> Let's be honest, you know, in all the different forms that this can take place, it's all problematic. Uh, I said earlier, I, at least I appreciate the honesty of the underlying motivations you have for making a choice like this. And the trans maxing manifesto does exist. You guys can look it up on the internet. I know Taylor was talking about some of the steps that you can take in order to trans max they're here it involves like watching certain you know japanese cartoons and animes banking your sperm starting hormone replacement therapy removal of unwanted hair facial feminization surgery social transition doing voice training there's a lot of different things that uh people are taking on here as a last resort you can try sissy hypno porn i have no idea what that is and I don't want to know I don't want to know what that is uh but yeah so that's transmaxing for you and there's an entire community of people who are knowingly making this choice and going down that path so yeah any final thoughts Taylor yeah I guess it's interesting to me that you know he, the the trans expert that the journalist uh brought in at toward the end of the documentary seemed to have a particular view of transmaxing sort of already and was already kind of on board with that. But mm -hmm. I imagine there's got to be trans activists out there who would consider this, you know, not being the right motivation if they consider gender dysphoria to be the basis for uh, th that's what, you know, makes trans identity something that is an essential part of your identity. That's typically where the argument stems from and, and why it is used as a justification for creating laws and policies that say, like, you can't discriminate against this person because it's a part of their essential identity. When mm -hmm. it, the manifesto is a mission guide, and he said, I would consider my mission accomplished if I could get the passport that says I'm a female legally. He didn't say I'll feel like my true self because that's not his motivation. And it's just interesting to me that like, I, even as we're watching, watching this, I'm seeing in the chat, uh, someone was saying like, y this show, like y'all reacting to this, the way you're talking about it is transphobic. But I would almost argue that uh, what he's doing, the trans maxers are appropriating, not just appropriating womanhood, but appropriating genuine transness, if we're to say that that's a, that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's crazy that the layers just keep getting deeper here. And yet the umbrella is so wide and we're so open-minded to all this stuff. And we're so quick to affirm any kind of sexual proclivity or gender identity or what have you that there, let's just accept all of this and put it all in the same bucket. And of course, that continues to add to the layers of problems that are manifesting themselves socially with, you know, women's spaces and things like that. Like there's no simple commitment to science, to order, to social convention, like you mentioned before, mm -hmm. or just truth like that is all taking a back seat to not just people's identity now but their sexual proclivities and their sexual preferences and it's a disturbing reality in the world in which we live and it seems like we're living in a time where the will slash you know resources culturally to 
assert reality and assert truth in the face of this stuff is uh, also at an all-time low. And we're just, this is the encroachment that we're seeing in the face of that. Yeah. And there's going to be more of this. I mean, the more incels yeah. that you create, or um, you could argue don't create, just the, it just pops up in the world kind of naturally now, given how like sick our society is with social media and diet and socialization and all these different things. Uh, the more incels you have, the more trans maxers you're going to have. I think people are going to come to this logical conclusion, I'll put that in air quotes, that uh, because a woman is going to be what is most beneficial to them and this manifesto has all these sort of uh, testimonials and things like look at these these are pretty like uh, i mean those transitions are doing pretty well like that looks like a whole so, i mean it's a marketing pamphlet. Yep. yeah it is a marketing pamphlet yeah this whole thing i mean look at this one that's like you know a very solid transition if those photos are actually you know true to the testimonials there you would if you go from you know the, these guys to these women, arguably, you're going to have more success if sexuality is what you are looking for. Um, uh, there's no doubt. I just don't think this is the way to uh, <laughs> to go about things. But again, there's going to be more of this because this is like the, the stuff that our society is creating. And now we're going to hear from you guys and do super chats. So let's hear from you on trans maxing. Yes, indeed. All right, Timothy W is our first one today. He says, this is disturbing. The amount of rejection these men must have faced for them to reach this point is unbelievably heartbreaking. Please stop hating men. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, some of it, it's got to be rejection. I think a lot of it is actually being so overwhelmed by the prospect of, by the idea of even trying that you don't even try. Like these people are, uh, many of them just, in their house all day. This guy says, you know, I didn't have a great relationship with my parents, so I was never taught how to be confident, how to be masculine, how to even... So if you are never even equipped with those tools in the first place, I think a lot of these individuals are never even trying to uh, go and talk to women because they don't want the possible rejection that lies on the other end of that, which rejection is a natural part of life. It truly is. And you know, this person saying, I met my boyfriend online, that makes total sense too, because online you deal with rejection, but it's through the screen, it's not real, it's in text messages, it's not like a tangible rejection that you would feel in talking to somebody that you walk up to at a bar. So I think part of it is not having success, but a huge part of it is not even trying and just deciding, right. you know, I'm not willing to go through the stress that it takes to try. Yeah, and in a lot of ways, it's like, why would you try? If what you value most and if what you're we're kind of conditioned now to believe culturally in this day and age where we elevate sex and sexuality to such a high place in our value structure when that is the the prime thing that you are seeking for in your life then why would you try to go out and get everything you can out of your identity in the gender or the body or whatever that you were given why you know historically there was that was more of a motivational thing is like i i believe in myself i'm i am made to become something i have the potential as a human to create to uh to embrace my life and maximize a life max you know mm -hmm. and uh, within the the reality of the the body and the life that you're given whatever that means and and there you know it feels like the sort of call or the motivation to do that just generally has diminished and we've also elevated just sex and sexuality to this like you know, prime position. And so if you have a shortcut to get what you want sexually, uh, even if it means giving up like your true self, mm -hmm. uh, then, or burying that, like, then why, why wouldn't you? And it's just the sad state of affairs, uh, in, in our society right now. Yeah. I, mean, I feel uh, bad for these guys. It's tough yeah. to not be viewed as attractive to other people. It's tough to be rejected by women. It's tough to not feel love in your personal life when that is Basically, the point of being a human being is to like build community and relationships and have companionship and love. And when you don't have that, I can't even begin to imagine how devastating and lonely that feels and like to have to wake up to that to that idea every single day into that life every single day. I imagine that people would take very drastic measures to not have that be the reality anymore. And this is just this just happens to be one of them. Uh, don't be a Huberman says, hey, gang, I wouldn't go through all that transitioning nonsense, but another option that is much cheaper 
is those Apple Vision Pros, hopefully soon. Oh gosh, yeah. Get your VR baddie girlfriend and your AI sex robot um, in, what, 2030, I guess, is probably when that stuff is gonna be, if it's not mm. already available. Yikes. I mean, again, that's kind of same, same problem and just a different, you know, solution that yep. you're, you're reaching for, a different tool to address it, but we're not getting to the core issue of like accepting yourself and becoming who you're made to be like that's that's off the table evidently yeah dude i saw this girl her name is belle delphine and she's very popular on the internet she's a very prominent like sex worker or whatever and i she's probably one of the most i i guess financially successful sex workers on the internet she went viral for selling her bath water to men who were buying it uh for thousands upon thousands of dollars and now she has made a doll of herself that men can purchase that like wears actual clothes that she's I got, uh, presumably purchased for herself, but is pretending to have purchased for herself and they can buy this doll. And her whole marketing structure is like, I know that you guys want to sleep with me because you watch my content online. Now you can almost. And she's selling these dolls to uh, men who are buying them and men are buying them. So, uh, you know, what am I, who am I to say? <laughs> what Send you do. asteroid, as we say. Yeah. Uh, uh, what about this says if men are turning to men for heterosexual attention, then are women's expectations too high? I see this as a supply and demand symptom. It's rough out there. Um, I, I don't know how you figure out. I, it's a spectrum. Like everybody has different standards. I think you could go out and be successful with women. You'd have to wade through the pool of people who you don't meet their standards or they don't meet yours or you guys don't vibe with one another in order to find that. Um, I do think sexuality is far more flexible than a lot of people get it give it credit and when you are in a stage of desperation you will go for whatever will like appease you in that moment and sometimes that's a man sometimes that's a woman sometimes you get you can't get women so you settle for men and I think a lot of that is happening in today's day and age a lot Zachary Peterson says, have you heard the term sneaky effers? Uh, what first comes to mind are the male feminists, but this takes it to the full extent of the idea. No, I've never looked at that. I'm, I'm going to look while we read. I think I get what he chats. means, though. Like people who are trying to pretend to be something in order to get sex right. from somebody. Yeah. They're like the guy is sneaky because he, he's like a male feminist is motivated to pose as a feminist in order to try to sleep with women. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. If that's what it is, you'll have to confirm. Yeah, I mean, in a way, you're, you're, I guess, posing as a trans person to sleep with men. So, I don't know. Also, do sleep not Google that phrase, guys. I just Googled it. <laughs> do not Google yeah. that phrase. Okay. I'm letting you know right now. Don't Google Good it. Cost. Just assume what we said was true. Don't Google it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in all other cases, verify what we say. In this case, do not. <laughs> Derek B says, please interview Kelly J. Keen and Mr. Minno. Uh, he has amazing parody songs like the Puberty Blocker song, YMCA, Y Chromosome song, etc. I've never heard of the second guy. I have definitely heard of Kelly J. Keen, and I would definitely be interested in uh, interviewing Kelly J. Keen at some point down the line. Maybe we will make that happen. It's a good suggestion. Alex Slusher says, sorry, babe, the TV guy is going to join us for our date tonight. The TV sure. guy. Oh, because they had a, the the date together and the guy who's the interviewer is going to join them uh, for okay. their yeah, date. Yeah, yeah, that was weird. Yeah, it's, yeah I'm it's, like, cable guy fixing your TV? I'm trying to <laughs> imagine what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, you always have to account for the fact that these people are on camera and that you're probably getting a whole different, more anxious view of what actually is going on in their lives because it's probably something that they're very much not used to. So I always take that into account. Yeah, and also, weird... if you weren't there, it didn't look like a very romantic setting. It was kind of like crammed on like half a table in a kitchen. In a very messy place, which is a sign of poor mental health. Uh, mm. um, don't be Huberman says, Amelie, you should watch Monday's episode of Fresh and Fit. Myron shows who Daisy uh, really is. I mean, Jin Chen really is. She's done a lot of stuff over in China. She's a felon. I mean, I, I think... None of that changes his reaction to finding out that he got a woman who he was engaging with on multiple occasions and stating, uh, claiming to love that he got her pregnant and was, uh, you know, particularly irresponsible in his actions and not ready to take accountability for somebody who claims that 
he, they want accountability for uh, both men and women. So, I mean, yep. she could be a prostitute who's been arrested on 10 different occasions for prostituting herself in China or whatever, you know, comes out about her. Doesn't change what was happening within uh, their dynamic and their relationship. And then he lies and says, I wasn't in a relationship with her. She was a 304. I guess. She's for the streets, blah, blah. Meanwhile, she has videos of him being like, I love you, queen, and blah, blah, blah. I can't wait to see you again. Uh-uh. They're both little dummies. BFFR, mm -hmm. as Amala says. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, you you criticized her as well. You says she has some of the responsibility. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, so that, that's a good a, amount. A fair analysis. Um, the Taylor Fan Club says, seems like this guy's liking the new attention or just desperately wants to be loved. Something you also see with teens who come out. He's probably been lonely, forgotten, and shut out all his life. 100%. Uh, and it starts seemingly from the moment you're born in the relationship that you have with your parents. Uh, if they can instill confidence in you and teach you how to lead a healthy lifestyle, you are set up for failure in a lot of ways. And you do have to transcend the poor conditions with which you were brought up in. And that's a very difficult thing to do. It is by no means easy. So yeah, I sympathize with the fact that he didn't have the ideal life and is now trying to gain attention and affection that he should have gotten in childhood in adulthood by transitioning to be a woman. It's a, it's a very sad reality to, to be in. I can completely understand why people do it. I wanna make that very clear. I just question whether or not it's the right thing to do. Roga says, doing another super chat. I did one last stream, but a glitch happened and it didn't go through. I was still charged for it. Just said, fresh is a clown. Fresh is a clown. Oh, nice. Well, well we got it on this show. So uh, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that you. glitch. Yeah, Roga, sorry about that. We appreciate you taking another swing at it. <laughs> totally worth it to it get is. that out there. Indeed. <laughs> Maui says, happy hump day, Ambula. I wanted to thank you for your influence. I struggle with PCOS and MDD and took a break, but listening to your videos encouraged me to return to the gym and a healthier lifestyle. You rock. Oh, I love that for you. That is so amazing. Oh my gosh, you're gonna have to keep me posted on your, your journey and everything because that is such a wonderful thing. I think a lot of times uh, people can get you know, diagnoses and things. And these are very real issues that you're going to have to deal with in life. And uh, it will make you feel defeated. I mean, I've thought about times in my life where you just uh, having no health problems at all, I still wake up and feel defeated. So I can't even imagine how, how difficult it is uh, once you have these diagnoses and things. But it's so wonderful that you've like taken the step to work and, and work out a little bit. And I truly think it does change you so much mentally. I can have like the worst day ever and then just push myself to go to the gym just to just to show up in the gym, just to walk in the gym and do like one machine. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, my mindset is a little bit better. I'm getting more oxygen, like my blood flow is up and it does just, uh, it like alters your brain chemistry. So I think that's awesome. And hopefully it's uh, leading you down a path to success and you feel happier. Yeah, I love that for you, love Maui, it. genuinely. Yes. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Onion says, uh, no, that, no. Oh, just, else, uh, just uh, yeah, I think we yeah. were feeling a lot of that in today's, <laughs> in today's yeah. episode. A lot of, uh, uh, but yeah, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> Onion, I still don't, I'm not sure how to, it's such a creative spelling, but, um, Celtic Blacksmith says, Taylor, I'm a bit sheltered, but you may have stumbled on something magical with that life maxing concept, methinks. IDK, if that's already a thing. Yeah, I don't know if it is either. You can put maxing on the end of any word, but Taylor, you came up with something there. <laughs> put it on a mug or something. No, man, but that's just like, uh, I don't know. Think of traditional culture, hero's journey type of thinking. It's, it, you know, we, we, especially as men, like you compete in, on hierarchies and you ascend and, and the, the hero's pattern is for you to shed off your shortcomings, to become the best that you can be, to embrace your identity, to find your identity and, and run with that and become all that you can be. I mean, that is like the story of our culture in many ways is that that's, that's how you do it. And, uh, 
life maxing should be the default story that we're telling ourselves mm-hmm. and the default mode of existence uh, that we approach life with, that we inculcate to uh, at a cultural level, at a family level and so- society. And like we, we should be calling people forth to to believe in themselves and to make something of themselves and contribute to society and believe that they have something to offer the world. And that it's not just about taking some sexual fulfillment out of life, but actually like going out and and helping be a force for for good mm-hmm. in the world and and offering the creativity and the unique talents and abilities that you have like and then that message just feels like it's not in the airwaves as much as it should be anymore and there's all these other messages that are pulling people toward the apple vision pros and yeah. the sex robots and yeah. the <laughs> trans maxing and it's like man we we need to start telling ourselves a different story mm-hmm. so there's my little soapbox for the day. All good. Um, but yeah, I like that life maxing. I think <laughs> we got a couple more here. Okay. Uh, Zachary Peterson says kleptogamy, kleptogamy is the scientific term. Okay. LOL. Are you guys just getting <laughs> I get me? I that. Like klepto is like stealing, gammy, womanhood. Yeah. Kleptogamy. Okay. I'm like, are you guys getting me to look? Is that an actual thing or is he just it refers to a Sesame? sneaking behavior during reproduction where an unpaired male fertilizes the eggs of an un, of a paired female. I don't know. I have to look into this. <laughs> I have to look into this. Interesting. Uh, Tulip sends a super chat. No message, but thank you for that, Tulip. Appreciate you, Tulip. My wife got some tulips at Home Depot a couple of weeks ago, and they were so beautiful for like a few days, and then they mm. died, and it was really sad. I do love a good tulip, lives. though. They are gorgeous. Uh, Quasicule says, polarization of any kind is a poison. Socialization certainly gets you that state. Sometimes one needs more than words of comfort. They need actions. Oh, yeah. It's a combination of a, of a lot of things. Um, I mean, we, we mustn't forget how powerful words are and how powerful the absence of certain words are. I think, uh, you know, looking at this kid, Sammy, if as a kid he was told, you know, you were born in in the right body and you were at the very least born in the body that you were given and you have the opportunity to make something really special out of this and you can be successful so long as we you know strategize and uh, commit to certain actions and and work towards our our goals and it's unfortunate that it it sounds like he never got that and uh, when you have a life that is absent of that kind of energy and of that kind of confidence you are bound to fall into like holes on the internet that give you a pseudo version of that confidence. And I think that's what he found in his trans maxing mm-hmm. community. People were saying, oh, you're gonna be so confident. You're gonna be wonderful. You're going to be special. He should have told, and I know a lot of people disagree with this. Don't tell kids that they're special. You know, nobody's really special. You're just another person, you know, don't give them the participation trophy. And I'm not saying give them participation trophies. I'm just saying kids do need to know that the way that they were born is good and they can do great things and achieve more and and make something special of themselves and when you don't teach a kid that it's like it just hate creates self-hatred and loneliness and they end up finding that feeling from people who are giving them the totally wrong message in tandem with it 100 percent. i think affirmation is is so huge in a child's development mm-hmm. and i as you're talking and and uh, with what Kwasi Kule said about like one needs more than words of comfort, they need actions. I think one, yeah, you need parents and, and people who will like not just say those things, but demonstrate that they believe in you to the extent that you can internalize that belief with, with their actions. But also um, it's part of the role, like archetypally of a father to kind of push you out of the nest a little bit and to uh, make you do things that are uncomfortable at the time. Mm -hmm. um, But they teach you to have confidence in yourself and believe that you can deal with the unknown and confront challenges and overcome them in the future. And that is that actions that you're talking about, like it's that's very important in the development of young people as well to be pushed and pushed out of their comfort zone. Like talk about cognitive behavioral therapy. How do you overcome phobias and things like that? Like it's exposure to the thing yeah. that gives you fear and, and in, not in the way what to where it traumatizes you, but to where you can incrementally get to a place where you overcome that little by little. And that is part of human development that uh, is normative, that, that should It should happen that way. And that's how you build strong people, resilient people, resilient children. And we live in a society now where 
it's all about safety and it's all about, you mm-hmm. know, affirm, like, like shallow affirmation, mm-hmm. not, and, and just saying like, you're okay, just the way you are. Any desire that you have needs to be immediately, you know, fulfilled and, and coddled upon and all of yeah. that. And there's nothing that's, no one's ever told no. And no one's ever told you need to get out there and like man up and just go and do something. And it's, and I feel like that's just creating a, a general weak mindedness, but also like a sense of, of inadequacy and purposelessness. And, and that is also why we have so much despair. And again, people are turning to shortcuts uh, because they're not, they don't have the inner fortitude or the will to go out there and make something of themselves. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's not about the participation trophy and giving it to them. It's about like, okay, we lost this game, bud. But we're going to work towards making ourselves better and incrementally we're going to just, you know, learn new skills and new tools to make ourselves better the next time we show up. And you are still valuable as a human being, even though you didn't win this thing that, uh, you know, somebody else got the trophy for. And then we move on and we forge ahead. (laughs) Mm. Win or learn, as they say. Yep. Uh, Dale says... A lot of what I'm seeing in the culture tells me we as a society need to be doing a better job supporting and guiding boys. A lot of what we're talking about, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Boys, girls, people, we need to do much better and tailoring the way we guide them to their sex. (laughs) Tailor. (laughs) Yeah, we have to tailor the way that we guide boys and girls. And largely, it's going to be very similar. We want to raise them with the same values and principles. But there are just different aspects of being a boy and different aspects of being a girl that we need to acknowledge and, and spread so that they can grow in a healthy in a healthy way. 100%. 100%. Um, la- last one I see from Quasim Kule says, I call forth a movement, Amala Maxing, get more based, more nuanced, have a charming laugh, better yourself constantly. Have wow. a nice day. You y'all. guys are so nice. <laughs> Amala Maxing. Gosh, that is hilarious. I appreciate the, the compliment and I'm glad that you are uh, apparently gaining something from listening to the show and hearing what we got to say. So <laughs> I and appreciate more, it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's all it. That's it. Okay. Now, one more to go out on. Simple, easy question. Alma mm-hmm. Taylor, what's your zodiac? I'm a Gemini. I don't know what that means, but I'm a Gemini. I know. I'm, I'm a Leo, but I don't know what that means either. Okay. Um, but hopefully so that gave you some information. There's your answer. We did you get can, another one. Yeah, read into that what you will. Uh, yeah, look, L- 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 Leshka Klug says... Uh, Thanks, Amla, for being the voice of many young adults like me, who uh, is also biracial. And I don't hey. know this first flag. Is that Polish and German? Or what's the red flag? I'm not sure. Red flag? You'll have to let us hey, know down below. Uh, quick question. Do you think Dylan Mulvaney could be considered a trans max? Dylan mocks to be a woman and profits it. You know, I can't uh, I can't give somebody their label. But if I was, you know, thinking, I think a lot of of trans people, not all of them are trans maxers. um, And they're either doing it subconsciously or consciously without admitting it. And I think Dylan Mulvaney could fall into that category, Um, not just because they have benefited from being a woman, uh, because I don't think that's what purely qualifies you as a trans maxer. It just seems to be like, you know, in the body language and in some of the things that are said that that could be either a subconscious, I could be charitable and say a subconscious motivation Mm -hmm. for Dylan. And not to, yeah, not to also like armchair psychoanalyze too much, but you could kind of observe through like Dylan's appearances on Price is Right before he transitioned and things like that. There's this very seeming uh, need, deep need for attention. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think where the transmaxer what that we watched today was motivated more probably by the sex element. Maybe for Dylan, there was the tra- the attention element that was kind of motivating him, and that was his path to maxing. So, yeah, yeah. There Someone you said go. Taylor's an INTJ and Amla's an INTP. That's I, I'm INTJ. Are you? I, I thought I was ENTJ. Okay. I don't know. My sister, my sister one time took a personality quiz with her friends. And apparently after you take the personality quiz on some of these websites, they'll give you like celebrities and public figures who have your very same uh, personality traits. And mine was on there. I was like, whoa, I, I, I made it. I'm on the personality <laughs> quiz like website. But it was the totally wrong profile for my personality. And I don't know how they I think they just estimate based on like your videos and people who know you inserting what they think your personality is. It was completely wrong. So if you found that online uh there's a ton of just misinformation about my uh personality but i think i'm entj 
I think, which is th- the campaigner. Funnily enough, I, I get the campaigner uh, one. I don't know if that matches up, but that is mine. <laughs> I'm, I'm the more introverted version of uh, ENTJ, the <laughs> INTJ, but I'm like there right in the middle of, of introvert, extrovert. There uh, we that, go. That's really funny. Yeah. Um, and by the way, Leleshka is Peruvian and German. Oh, so Peruvian and German. So she's question. she's mixed mixed masking uh, maxing. That's what somebody said in the comments down below. <laughs> we, uh, me and Amal yeah. are mixed maxing. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh, okay, guys. That's today's show. I hope it was an interesting topic. It was certainly interesting for me. Uh, you guys can check out more about trans maxing. There's a ton of videos online. There's an entire manifesto if you guys are interested to that degree that you can go and read. And let me know your thoughts in the comments down below after the stream. I'd love to hear from you guys, especially those that disagree with me. I saw a few of you in the chat saying, oh, I'm a turf, I'm a transphobe. Let me know what you think about trans maxing down below. Would love to hear from you if you like this video like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time we're live. That's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. Plus, we post videos for you guys every single day. Tomorrow's video is about soft guy era. Men who are responding to girls who want a soft girl life by saying, now we're in our soft guy era. They want the women to pay for things. If she wanted to, she would. They want the women to pay for the first date and Venmo them for their cologne that they're buying at the mall. It's very real. You guys have to check out that video. It's definitely going to be an interesting one. And I can't wait for you guys to see it. And with that, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Wednesday. And if nobody tells you you're adequate and valuable today, let me tell you you're adequate and valuable and you can do great things. And on that, I will bid you adieu. Bye, guys.